I, I finished university in 2018 with um, the University of Technology, Sydney. Now, I, my final essay that I wrote was a socialism versus capitalism um, debate, believe it or not. And I used to be a former socialist during school and then halfway through I became more conservative. Now, at the end of, at the conclusion of my exam, I was handed a pink piece of paper. It was, it said on one side, do you want your results? And then if you turn it over, it says, complete the mandatory sexual consent online course. What's that? Well, what you had to do in order to receive your marks for that semester was you had to go online and complete a course which taught men not to rape. Let me put it that way. It was, it was, a, it was a sexual consent course. Now, in 2018, they said they weren't going to release my marks if I didn't complete it. I said, no, there's no damn way you're going to withhold my degree because it was my final semester um, from me getting it. And I stood my... I thought no one... If it was not my last semester, I would have had problems. So I... I thought no one would um, confront this again until I'd come back for my master's. Turns out another student did confront it. And I put him in contact with uh, Mark Latham, who's been trying to cover these sorts of things in his yeah. religious freedom bill, which is kudos to Mark. Well done. It's a very well-written bill. I talked with Dr. Con Cafetaris last week on my Thin Ice show about it. He's done a very good job. And that's the reality of what's going on in our university campuses. This young man that I introduced to Mark, they, he, he said, I would not complete that, that test. And because of that, they weren't going to let him graduate. They were withholding all of his marks and he, he can't get a job without the piece of paper. So I, I hesitate when I tell people, when I started uni, I said, go for it, go to uni. Now I hesitate and it's really sad. I'm glad you shared that with myself and, and probably a lot of other viewers that are watching this because we have no idea what is actually happening. By hearing this information, you know, that's where I'll take it back and I'll talk to the ministers and see what we can actually do to clean this up. And another big problem that's been raised with me is the kangaroo courts that's used at universities. Um, so do you... Dave, I'm sorry, I'm, I don't want to take the, 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 can, the kangaroo. The kangaroo courts, was it? Yeah, I've got, I've got some. Pauline, got we're having, on we're having uh, a, a great time. Where it's, uh, <laughs> the whole, it's a whole ball of fun. Um, watching you listen to these, these guys, uh, it, it won't go on forever. Don't worry, you've got yeah. liberty for now, though. <laughs> I've great. got, I've got something on that. Raised with the minister, what I've heard is that about the canker reports that are actually happening at universities, and if we can actually rein it in and pull them into line, and so that we. Um, this is not allowed to happen at the universities. If there's taxpayers' dollars going to the universities, I'm sorry, there has to be guidelines and you can't allow this to go on. Pa yep. Pauline, in terms of the kangaroo courts, if you don't mind, Dave, very briefly, the standard of proof in these kangaroo courts is significantly lower. Now, we're seeing that in real time with Drew Pavlo and he's being incredibly maligned in that case. Now, in the cases of rape cases, for example, in university or sexual assault cases, the the standard of proof rather than allowing the criminal courts to take care of this there is a significant legal push in our campuses to push kangaroo courts so let me give you an example from the us in what what they what they're trying to what they what they actually did and now they're scaling back kangaroo courts in the us is yeah. for example if if a, if a young lady says that you know uh, barkley did this this and that to me and you know they they had intercourse and the next morning, you know, they trade texts and say, you know, that was great, this and that. If she changes her mind and has, you know, re regretful intercourse and changes her mind and lodges a complaint with um, the university, in in the kangaroo court, those texts that they sent across saying, I, I had a great time, and she also says, yeah, it was really great, let's do it again, he couldn't use that as evidence. Whereas in the criminal courts, that would 100%, in fact, that's often gotten the young man off because often these things come down to he sh he said she said uh situations whereas these texts offer an insight into the motives of both people after the deed was done just to give you an example 
And if I can jump in on the topic of kangaroo courts as you're talking about, Pauline. We will keep um, it to 60 seconds, though, but you get the last word. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. So, um, you know, Drew Pavlu is really one of my close friends um, here on campus. And and prior to being suspended, he also served with me on the, the Union Council. And, you know, if you think about it from a political perspective, perspective myself and drew are essentially polar opposites so it would have benefited me politically um for him to have been suspended because it means that he can't run for the union elections and with his large following he likely would have ended up president but the issue that i want to you know canvas and the reason why i'm in full support of drew is because free speech isn't political it's principle and i mm. think that's something that we all should stand by and you know that's why i'm lending my support to drew pavlu even though we're chalk and cheese yeah need it